it sometimes feels like we just can't win. But we do. That's the awesome part. We do. We do win because what happens is we go out there and our experiences of being the only and in, of being in traumatic situations, it gives us a renewed energy to fight and make a change. The change is not about the individual anymore. It's not only about you. It's about something bigger than you. And there's something so profound and something so exciting about that, that you actually go out there and you create a better outcome for others. In this video, I'm sharing another part of my conversation with one of my mentors, Ruchika Tolshian. Now, Ruchika has quite the resume. Like me, she's a former journalist. She has bylines in Bloomberg, Forbes, and now the Harvard Business Review. Through her company, Candor, Ruchika advises companies on diversity and inclusion strategy. She also wrote a book called The Diversity Advantage, Fixing Gender Inequality in the Workplace. I wanted to ask her about a decision that many of us might face. When you realize there's a problem related to diversity and inclusion at your organization, should you even speak up? I ask that because it's a decision that carries a lot of risk, especially if you're young and you're at the very early stages of your career. But it's also a choice that can affect people other than yourself. You and I have both been in situations where maybe we were the only. So maybe the only woman or the only woman of color or the only person of color. DNI is something that I really value a lot, but I also recognize that it might not be in my best interest to make a scene. I think actually we have to take a step back in that and also understand like what is the appetite within this organization to make change. And over the years I've found that some places really want to make a change and they would accept that feedback and be very open to listening and learning and actually that actually goes a step beyond diversity equity and inclusion either an organization is pretty um, innovative and has created a culture of like learning and listening and, and that's on everything right like mm -hmm. hey our product doesn't make sense or hey our customers aren't enjoying what we're doing or whatever it is um, and and then that really carries forward to um, the culture within the organization of how employees are treated and how their feedback mm -hmm. is sort of valued. Um, and so I think, I think it's a good idea to kind of see, take stock of like where is your company when it comes to those issues. Are they in listening and learning mode or are they going to be defensive just as a culture? The other thing I think that's really important um, is, is understanding who are your allies and advocates. Like who's going to be in your corner if you go up and speak on these issues, right? right? Is it your manager? If your manager is an advocate and an ally, that's amazing. Like if they are the people who you can go to with concerns and issues and they've really listened. Sometimes it's not your manager and sometimes it's other people within the organization who, who have power, who have influence. Um, and sometimes, and, and very many times, they're not actually the people who look like you. It's not always the people who look like you. And back to this question, if you're the only and there are no other women of color or there are no <laughs> other people of color, then you're not going to find anyone who looks like you. The last part of it that really, for me, that I've, I've had to look at and be really honest with myself about is like, what is this environment doing to my health, right? And in, 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 in past organizations, and I know I say this, you know, for, with, you know, with position of privilege of even being able to make that choice and decision but if an environment is so negative if things are so uh, systemic and problematic how is it going to impact your health right and mm -hmm. and there were times there were times when I was in environments that were just so difficult the 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 actual um, health impact of being the only and constantly being sort of it's constantly sort of being viewed as Ruchika does this because she's a woman, or Ruchika thinks this way because she's a woman of color, or you know, Ruchika doesn't understand because she's not from the United States. Um, these sorts of things really started impacting my health, and I knew it would impact the impact that I wanted to make yeah. in my career and in my work. And so that those are the moments where you really sort of have a cold, hard look at reality. Um, you go back to your mentors, mostly outside the organization, and just say, like, what is your advice on this? Do you think this is something that 
is something I should bring up or do you think I should just not, you know, say, anything. not say anything and maybe even think of an exit strategy? I hate giving that advice um, because you know my, my belief is that people can learn and people are coachable and organizations in general leaders want to do the right thing. A lot of my clients, I see this, they really want to do the right thing. Um, but then there are also people out there who just don't want to learn. And, and that's something that we need to be able to differentiate between for our own health care, for our own, you know, for our own peace of mind mm-hmm. and our productivity and our ability to make a change in the world. I think when it comes to raising feedback to managers, I, do, I would say that it does have to be a very calculated decision and you have to be willing to think about how much of your energy you're willing to give to this. I think especially if you are the only at an organization, there might be a good chance that nobody else has brought up their concerns before. Maybe there have been concerns in the past, but nobody brought it up. So you are going to be the first one. Think about the worst case scenario. What if they don't see the issue that you're raising? What if they don't take you seriously? And I will say it from the other side of being a person who didn't raise it and how when I think of my biggest career regret, it is that I walked away without saying anything. It takes tremendous courage to say something, uh, much more courage to say something than to not. It's, It's actually cowardly. And so you're absolutely right. Most of the time you're not, it, it will never ever benefit you. It won't. Who it will benefit will be the people coming behind you and you need to understand what that entails, what are the risks. You know, there's certainly no direct reward ever. You can then go on and correct and sometimes I think that that's what I'm trying to do, right? I'm correcting Mm -hmm. organizations or at least advising organizations um, so that other people would not have to deal with what I ha- what I had to deal with, and far worse. Sometimes I think about what I what I missed and and what I what you know how much I regret not raising concerns while I was going through it for those reasons for the risk for the for the worry on my career um, you know penalties for future opportunities especially when you're young you don't want to be the rabble rouser um, you know you don't know if then you'll never be hired again. Um, so that risk reward sort of evaluation is super important, but also know from someone who didn't raise concerns when I should have in, in my past, um, you know, there is a there is a definitely a very strong element of regret that comes with it too. It sometimes feels like we just can't win, but we do. That's the awesome part. We do. We do win because what happens is we go out there and our experiences of being the only and in, of being in traumatic situations, it gives us a renewed energy to fight and make a change. The change is not about the individual anymore. It's not only about you, it's about something bigger than you. And there's something so profound and something so exciting about that, that you actually go out there and you create a better outcome for others, right? It's not just about you. It's not about the customer you're trying to serve. It's, it's really, when I think about it, that's why I got into journalism in the first place. I got into journalism in the first place because I was like, the public needs to know what they don't know. We need to uncover the truth. Mm-hmm. And in some ways, when you um, are a values-based person who, for whom diversity, equity, and inclusion are top of mind, you're really doing the same thing, right? Mm-hmm. And you're making the world a better place by doing that. All right, I feel better now. (laughs) If you found this video helpful or insightful, let me know by leaving a comment down below. I post videos regularly to LinkedIn and YouTube, so follow me on either of those platforms for more content like this.